course, people, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to this show. The Arsenal Roundabout is back and I've got some absolutely fantastic guests for you. Put together an elite panel. Kenny Ken is back in the house. Brandon is back from True Gunners TV. And we've got Guna Lee in the house tonight as well. There's no Agal tonight. There's no Northside tonight. They're busy doing other content and other commitments, but it's great to have you three with me. We're going to talk all things Arsenal. We're going to touch on how we do rattle the fan bases are alongside us. The neutral fan base are in absolute meltdown. I've never known a nil-nil draw to be spoken about about so much, but we move to tomorrow night. Luton, do we rotate? What do we go with team-wise? We're going to talk about that as well. And there's football going on in the background tonight, so we're going to be talking about that and touching on that as goals go in, I'm sure. So let's introduce the panel. Kenny, how are you, my friend? I'm all good, Dan. You know, um, we had a, you know, a Saturday night um, special, you know, late night before the game. Missed a bit of match of the day, but... You know, um, we had a good chat and, you know, the match itself, well, we'll get to that anyway. But in terms of, like, do we rotate for Luton, the answer is no. We've got nine cup finals. It's business end of the season. It's a championship round. We haven't got the luxury of being two or three points ahead. We're actually trailing Liverpool. So, can leave no margin for error and we can't afford to drop any points. That's my um, attitude. Interesting, man. Guna Lee, how are you, bro? Good to see you back on the channel. Listen, man, you know what it is, Dan. It's, uh, it's great to be back. Obviously, I'm um, streaming with Kenny for the first time. Brandon, uh, I've, I've uh, definitely streamed with you many times before. Um, and if, yeah, if just, just going off um, what you asked the first question, I, I would rotate. I wouldn't rotate heavily, but I would rotate. I think, you you know, you've got players in the squad and you've got to trust the squad. I think the manager's got to trust the squad. And this is what managers do. Top managers, they use the squad. There's no point. I mean... Obviously, I don't want to like talk and ramble on forever, but Dan, we've spoken so many times off screen mm -hmm. about, you know, why did he give Reese Nelson a contract who I actually like? So it's not like I'm getting onto him for that, but you've got, and I'm not saying to play Reese Nelson. What I'm saying is you've given players money, you've got to use them. And, you know, there could be a crunch moment where you need to use these players. You've got to get them in some rhythm, you know? So listen, um, I'm sure we're going to get into it in further detail. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's let's hope for the best for tomorrow. A hundred percent, man. Brandon, great to have you back on the channel again, bro. How are you, man? You look tired, bro. You good? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I had a bit of bad news on Friday. Uh, oh. unfortunately, unfortunately, one of my best friends from school uh, took his own life. So rest in peace. Oh to him. man. Um. So yeah, it's been a bit of a tough weekend. But uh, the nil-nil draw cheered me up. Let's just put it that way. Uh, well, bro, <laughs> it, when makes I you realize that, it, it makes so. you realise football uh, is not as important as sometimes we like to make out it is, man. So I'm sorry to hear that, my bro. And I hope that you and the family are all good and your mates are all good, man, because that is the worst news, Brandon. So big yeah. up to you, man, and big up to coming on. Um, and I hope that the weekend was as best as it can be. Listen, a nil-nil draw is what we're going to start and talk about. I'm just going to touch on it because I've done quite a lot of content on it, man. Um, before we do that, please do me a favour in chat, man. Please make sure you smash a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. Those two things are absolutely free. And I know people go on about it on every stream, but it really does make the channel what it is and it does promote it in the best way so please just hit two buttons like and subscribe and you're done make sure you're following all these free guys on their social media platforms and their youtube channels as well so make sure you're hitting that in if you do want to go and get surfshark vpn it is pinned in the comments all you got to do is click the link and it will take you straight to it make sure you do get that people uh, and please support our sponsors for the channel football prizes they have got unbelievable prizes on their website some of which i'll show you now and there is an unbelievable one um, if you're an Arsenal fan, it is a Dennis Burkamp signed shirt with an LED reel of his best video clip. So make sure you're in for that one. For the cost of two ninety five, you're in with a chance to win this. You've got the Mercy Arsene with twenty two on the back for his years that he was at the club, and signed memorabilia from Arsenal Football Club as well. It's not just the Arsenal. Uh, it's also got Newcastle Spurs. You've got the Almiron shirt there. Uh, $3.95, two hospitality tickets to go to watch Newcastle versus Spurs. I know this is on an Arsenal show, but this channel is all football. We've got Manchester United versus Liverpool, two hospitality tickets there as well, just for the cost of £20, which is unbelievable. And if you keep going down and go to football prizes, you'll see it's not just football. There's literally... Uh, memorabilia of all sports, including Tyson Fury. Uh, you've also got a private jet for England versus Slovenia uh, as well. So it does do the international football as well. So please make sure that you get involved with that, people. Uh, football prizes, 
on the website and go and get your tickets. Um, listen, let's start with Kenny. Kenny, it's nil-nil, and I've never known so many neutral fans lose their heads over a nil-nil draw. Nil-nil draw. I'm stunned. I really thought that my phone was going to be going off with people going, fair play to Arsenal. Nil-nil, the best of games, bit boring, not really one that we were entertained by, but fair play, Arsenal didn't get battered. Nope, the complete opposite. All we get is Arsenal bottled it. Arsenal parked the bus. Arsenal didn't want to come and play football. Arsenal was supposed to be the best team in the world and they couldn't show up against Man City. I think, honestly, it's Chelsea, Spurs, West Ham, even United uh, fans looking up at us, jealous, going, oh, I didn't get hammered. What can we do to wind them up? Oh, we'll just say that they part the bus and they're not very good and then rattle them that way. Have a go at Saka and see how crap he was again and then we move on. Like, honestly, don't get me wrong. I think there's a potential missed opportunity in terms of some of the chances that we missed, but I'm not going to sit there and say that this was a disgrace of a performance. I thought defensively we were amazing and I just don't understand why Arsenal Football Club rattle the fan bases that are neutral to us so much because we're a side that haven't won anything for 20 years. We haven't won a European trophy for 30. We haven't won a League Cup for 30. So we've had a few FA Cups in that time and we're rattling everybody. I don't get it, Kenny. What's it all about, bruv? Oh, you're the, situation on is, uh, the situation is, is that, you know, it, new, neutrals always want, want a classic whenever two big teams play. And it doesn't happen like that. Both teams had a lot to lose, especially us. You know, fact is, is that it's not it's not a two-horse race for the championship. It's a three-horse race for the championship. Liverpool just won. We're playing the best team in Europe who've got, you know, excellent attacking players. They've got De Bronya, Rodri, Foden, Silva, Haaland. What are you going to do? And they, you know, the context of the game, they had a lot of the ball. We had, we always knew we were going to do more defending than, than attacking. And we were we were always going to have to pick our moments at the right times. City, you know, started like a train for the first 30 minutes. You know, what are we going to do? You know, not defend. We're going to have to, you know, quell them, you know, quieting down the crowd, which we've done really well. So I don't know. The reason why people rattled is banter, isn't it? I mean, Man United fans, well, look at their tactics at Anfield. They went to Anfield, you know, on the back of some really bad results. Obviously, they got knocked out of Europe. They didn't exactly um, play flow and attacking football at Anfield because they knew they couldn't afford to lose that game. So they put men behind the ball and, come on, Chelsea, come on, under Jose. And then, you you know, you've got... Um, you know, other fans, West Ham fans, come on. they got David Moyes' as manager. David Moyes is, you know, is probably a negative manager anyway. So it's just banter. At the end of the day, it doesn't bother me whether they rattled. I'd rather they get rattled than on the 19th of May when we're lifting the title because they'll have something to be rattled about. Right now, they should just re relax themselves and think, you know what, there's still nine games, anything can happen. Who knows? They could cook us at the end of the season. We don't win anything. But if we win something, then... We're the ones who are going to be at the town hall taking our photos with the trophy. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is what makes me laugh because, Guna Lee, I'll come to you. Um, Chelsea, they're looking up. They're embarrassing. They can't even get into the top half of the table. And I'm seeing their mm -hmm. fans on Twitter, Slate Saka, start comparing them to Cole Palmer again, start telling everyone how great their side is and that Arsenal aren't really that great and they're overrated and it's all washed and all this stuff. Mate, it was nil-nil. So the, the, yeah, none of us over-celebrated it. We moved on. Some of us were disappointed. Some of us said fair play. Some actually looked at it in a sensible way and thought, you know what, we've come quite far. We're not still ready, but we've come quite far. I don't think Arsenal were a disaster on social media compared to what we have been in the past. And yet, some of these fans, they just cannot take it, brother. It's bizarre. I don't know why we rattle them so much, bro. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I think for the first time in a very, very long time, I've actually been quite proud of the Arsenal fan base in the sense that everybody feels united. I feel like a lot of Arsenal fans are actually just a bit like, some of the rival fans are actually pathetic. And... You know what? I feel like, I don't know, maybe I haven't seen it as much, but I don't feel like many rival fans have been that bad other than the Man City fans. I feel like the Man City fans are so salty. And I think what I've actually realised is that basically Liverpool and Man City, they don't like it because they're not slapping us 4-1 anymore, 5-0 anymore. 
And that's what it is. They just want us to keep doing the same thing we've been doing for years and years. Come out them, little old brother. And, and, and you know, it's almost like, you know, when you've got your you've got your younger brother and he feels like he's a younger sibling and he feels like they can step up to you. And all you do is just put your hand there and they're just swinging, <laughs> trying to punch you. And that's what and now they're getting a bit bigger and they're getting a bit stronger and they can actually put up a fight against you. You're just like, mm, maybe I need to go gym. Maybe I need to start doing something to put a bit more effort in. Or maybe I need to do something to belittle them. Like, oh, you know, I used to change a nappy or, you know, you used to pee the bed until you were 11, 10 years old and telling all your friends. That's what Man City are like. And that's what bloody Liverpool are like. So for me, look, I'll be very, very honest with you. I was very, very happy with what I saw. And the reason why is because we've been asking for years and years since Wenger days. Can you please sit up against the opposition? Drop your ego and do something that is going to help to nullify and get something from a top top in a top top performance. And we've seen this now. We've wanted to see from Arteta for years and years. Listen, I love Arteta, but we've wanted to see this guy progress year on year to help us get to the point where we win and get to the promised land. And when you see those kind of performances, I take away from the Man City game and I look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is I feel confident going away to some of these big teams and getting a result to get us these to get us the league. Because you you, you know you look at where where we've come from and where we are now, it is literally like night and day. Like the the setup, the the, the team, the teamwork, great, the effort, the, the the team um continuity, all of that. It's just great. So yeah, listen, man, I I don't know why if rival fans are so rattled by a, a nil-nil draw where you know apparently we have no world-class players and Man City have nine world-class players what the hell are we meant to do and oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry for a second the fact that you know oh my god poor old Man City that they've lost Walker but bloody hell they can bring on an 80 million pound player but bloody hell they can bring on a 100 million pound player but bloody hell, they can bring on, you know, the, the English the, the English New Hope in Rico Lewis. So, I mean, excuse me for Arsenal trying to do something to negate this world-class treble winning, winning team. I, I just don't get it, but it is what it is. Facts, man. Listen, you're speaking absolute facts. Before I come to Brandon, big up to Max. AFC Max yeah. has just gifted 10 memberships, man, and is put in an unbelievable super chat, man. Absolutely. I have to read up. Big up, my guy. Thank you so much for this, bro. You don't know how much that means. Honestly, that is outstanding. Thank you so, so much, man. I really do mean that. Um, AFC Max says, I love Dan. I love Kenny. I love Gooner Lee and Brandon. I love your streams with this panel and others, especially AFTV and your content there, especially during my grandma's death two weeks ago. Love the saltiness from rivals. Make no mistake, we can win the Premier League and the Champions League. Well, listen, first of all, big up for the super chat, my guy. Yeah. And also, I'm so sorry to hear the death of your grandma. Yeah, and I'm sorry, so about, sorry about you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%, man. I'm so glad that this content like this has helped you through tough times. I'm the same. Whenever I go through bad times, I always make sure I'm around the good people that I enjoy listening to and I love. So make sure that you do the same, my, my guy. And Max, thank you so much, man. Honestly, that's absolutely amazing. And you know what? It's mad because a lot of the times I've been debating whether we can win the Premier League or the Champions League. I've spoken to Brandon and Kenny on here a lot of times. Performances like that, Brandon, yeah, make me think that the Champions League, we might have a chance because if we can go to the Etihad and actually get a nil-nil draw when needed or when we believe that we... um the, the kind of chips are down type, type thing. That gives us a little bit more confidence going to the Champions League, bro. Say, so, so, can I just ask you guys a question? Because I haven't yeah, go actually on, got your, your thoughts. Who would you... I mean, look, we have to get through the next round, but who would you rather play, Real Madrid or Man City in Champions Man League? Man City. Another one, Real Madrid in the Champions yeah. League ever. Yeah. What, what, what about Kenny? You know what? <laughs> yes, you know what? You stumped me, man. You you just you just bowled us... You just, you just got them done a shame all to me, mate. <laughs> no, on a serious level, it's a great question, but the reason why I had to think about it, because I always talk about Arsenal's defence over um, you know, how they you know they play really well when it's man well, defending really well it's Man City, but I always think under over 180 minutes, are we gonna be able to keep you know Real Madrid's attack quiet and Man City's attack quiet? And that's where I think I'm not sure. I'm really not sure because we know Man City, but Real Madrid, um, you know, they're very unpredictable and, you know, they, they're they fighters in that competition. So, pff, neither. I don't want either of them, man. 
<laughs> Seriously, I'm sitting on the fence, mate, because they're bo- I worry about both of those teams because of the fact that they're seasoned, you know, Champions League teams now. And we're just, uh, I do f- personally think that our best bet of winning um, silverware this season actually is the league, because I think we're actually built for the league in terms of like the, the makeup of our attack and um, the compactness of our defence. In Europe, still think there's a bit to go. I think maybe next season, when we get better players, I think, yeah, that's where I think we'll be strong in Europe. Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a tough question to ask uh, and, and to answer, really. Um, I'd have to say City, probably, because, like you say, we know them. We play them at least twice in a season in, in the Premier League anyway. Um, we know that our defenders can lock off Haaland. They've done that twice in a row this season. In fact, three times in a row as well, because he didn't have many chances in the community shield as well. I just I worry with Real Madrid about Vinicius Jr.'s pace against our back four and how unpredictable they can be. Um and they also have the ability as well to, you know, do a similar thing to what we did against Man City at the weekend, where they can just like, do you know what? We're just gonna come park the bus. You're going to have to break us down and then we'll beat you at the burner bell. So I, I don't think City are, are, are that capable of doing that. I think, you know, defensively, they're not as good as Real Madrid. So I look at that and I think mm, I'd probably prefer City um, over two legs. But to be fair, I wouldn't want either either. So, but, you know, no. we, if, if it comes to it and we've got to play one of them, it'll have to be Man City for me. Do you know what? It's mad because the reason I say Man City, there's two reasons. One, if it was the Champions League season this season, we would have beaten them because we beat them 1-0 at home and then drew at their place 0-0. Secondly, Real Madrid won it 14 times. Man City won it once. So I don't want the Kings of Europe, man. I want to avoid them. Real Madrid just know how to do it, mate. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's no... there's, there's no. I'll tell you this, actually. If we get through to this semi-final and we lose, there'll be no shame in going out to either Man City or Real Madrid. It's not like we've got to the semi-final and bottled it against a Dortmund, let's say, or maybe a Benfica or somebody like that. Then you'd be frustrated, right? Or maybe a Porto like we've just beaten. But going through against Man City or Real Madrid is ridiculously hard. And if we do that, we deserve to win it. If it was my dream scenario, I would rather have Man City than Real Madrid. And I want Barcelona in the final to get revenge from 2006. That's what I want. That would be my dream scenario, right? But in terms of the Premier League, Kenny's always like sat there. And to be fair, Kenny, you've always said you fancy us for the Premier League. There's nine cup finals, mate. And it leads me on nicely to tomorrow night. We talk about rotating. I personally disagree with you slightly. I would make a couple of changes. I'm not going to make wholesale Mm. changes like a completely B team. But maybe we make three changes. I don't want Saka starting. He don't look fit. So for me, change you know, him. You know, it's like with Dan, don't you? You know, well, if he Mikel, plays, I'll be like, I'm, I'm starting to get worried about this now. If he's going to play him you, again, you know, you, the thing with Mikel is that over the last few years, whenever in the 21 season when we when we struggled, let's not fight, we struggled. The one saving grace was his one saving grace was Bukayo Saka. You know, he's changed the formations, changed the team in you know, every um, season since then. But the mainstay has always been Saka. Regardless of whether Saka's 80 percent fit, he's always played him. The only time he he's left Saka out is when he's really had to, and that was um, the Man City game, which we actually won it ironically. But apart from that, I don't I don't see any kind of him rotating on Bukayo Saka. I really don't because he still I don't know he still sees Bukayo Saka as the, as the one player who's guaranteed to actually unlock a defence. I know people look at Odegaard, but from a sort of um, you know, lot. You know, the last third. You know, our, our front three. It's always been a situation where he just relies heavily on Saka in terms of his pace, his crossing ability, and his ability to draw fouls and get into goal scoring positions. I think he thinks he's our best player. I just get that impression from Mikel. I, I take the agree with him. By, by the way, I, I know you asked who, how, what we would do. I think Arteta is going to pretty much go with the strongest available maybe one change in the team i wouldn't but i think i think i think someone like kivio could come out and i think Jorginho has a possibility of being dropped so that's one or two but i think everybody else will play um i wouldn't do that of course um obviously kenny again i'm obviously he, he said his opinion but i i would make a few more subs um or say changes what would your start 11 be then what would your start 11 be 
Um, I would definitely, I'll pretty much keep the same back four or back five. I would swap, um, as I said, Kivio for Tomiyasu just to get minutes. And I think it's a game where, you know, I think the, the issue that Luton will we, we'll have against Luton is they're good in set pieces. They're a tall, strong, physical team. And I think Tomiyasu, as well as Kivio's done, I just think Tomiyasu is just a great one on one defender and he's great with set pieces, attacking and defensively. I would then obviously go into the midfield. I would swap Jorginho for Partey, get a bit of rhythm. This is a game where we sh should control the game. So I think Partey can come in there and he can build that connectivity back up with um, with Odegaard again. I would I would start Martinelli. I think I would start Martinelli. I would probably play Jesus off the right and put Trossard in the um, false nine role. Um, move the move move them about move the dilute and defense about. It's not ideal. I, I'm not sitting here saying I think Trossard is amazing in the force number nine, but I know it's nine cup finals. You're 100 right, Kenny. You're 100 right, Brendan. But I just think that what I've seen from this team is we struggle with three games a week right now just because of the str the, the squad going forward. And what I think is. When we get to that period when we've got Man City, sorry, Man City, Bayern Munich, and then we've got Wolves away, we need to have as many, well, many players limited with the amount of games that they've played. So this is just an opportunity that you can do this. Um, so that's the reason why, as you said, people like Saka, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even put him on the warm up bit. That the bench should be warming up. I want him out the squad. Put your feet up, um, uh, obviously, and, and, and move it from there. And I think even it gives a bit more. A bit more pressure on the, some of the other players to kind of, you know, get some minutes, man. Like, just we're gonna need these players. Like, the, we we have starters in the squad and we have finishes. We've seen players that um, are finishes. Trossard, he came on. I thought he was quite good in his little cameo. I know you, the, the 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 cross wasn't great, but he, you know, he's a finisher. You've got Fabio Vieira. He looks like a finisher for the team right now. Right now, Partey looks like a finisher. So we've got players that start and finish, and I think that's this is a game where you have to. You have to try and capitalize on that because of the quality we're playing. But yeah, yeah, man. Listen, I I'll tell you my team um, in a minute. But firstly, before I come to Brandon, I've got to say this is this show is all about Max, man. Absolute legend. Much appreciate you, man. You're gifted another ten memberships. Thank you so much, my guy. A lot of people are saying thank you. Isaac's one of them guys. Fear and loading is another guy. Terry is another one saying thank you. Massive respect. Um, uh, to you for that and you've put in your super chat as well man which i'm going to read out now before i come to brandon so max has also said love for the love everyone as turkish would say and i mm -hmm. said this when the Bayern fiction came out if we get city in the next round i think we go through and i think we play atletico madrid in the final do you know what i said the same man i said i think i think diego simeone will definitely shit house his way to the final that's what diego simeone does man and i really feel like Atletico Madrid can do that against either PSG or Barcelona after I think they will comfortably beat Dortmund. So that's what I'm going with, man. I think they will get to the final. Um, going to be interesting. Mikel Antonio, by the way, has missed an absolute sitter. Gone through one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Absolutely shockingly bad. Just Did you actually expect him to score? Did you actually expect oh, him to score? I mean, I would actually, because that was poor, Kenny. Like, he's through one-on-one, -on -one, man. He's got all the time in the world. How many, how many, time you, how many times have you seen Mikel Antonio actually do that? And then... Fall on the floor, exhausted after he's um. Made Unbelievable, those mate. Unbelievable. The joke of it is, he bloody had a one on one against Newcastle the other day, and he scored it. I don't get it. That's what I mean. Like he was, he was through. This was easier than the one he scored the other day. It's mad. Bro. I, I, I don't want to be churlish, but that's why he plays for Jamaica and not England. And that's <laughs> well, the, there we go. <laughs> off, let's not having a go at Jamaicans because I know, I know there's there, we've got a huge Jamaican contingent amongst their fans, and they. <laughs> A lot of Jamaican um, ball, um, heritage oh. friends, and I'm, I'm going to get a horse whipping, and they're going to call me a pork chop freak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, I tell you what, if I'm, I tell you, I, I'm, you better hope my mum's not watching this, mate. Because oh, she'll, uh, she'll be coming, she'll be coming out your mom, door. Mom, mate. Sorry, mum, sorry, yeah. mum. She'll, she'll be finding that fake address you've got behind you, mate. <laughs> no, 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 mum, 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 mum. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, but, <laughs> but it, it's it. You. That's the thought, first thought that came to my mind because he was in and around England squads, um, Mikel Antonio, you know, you know, um, in the last you know, couple of years where he was in the goodish form for West Ham and actually on the right. But you look at that, if you were going to put your life on Mikel Antonio, um, Mikel yeah. Antonio putting a chance away, you just think, you know what? Nah, just, 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 you have to pray. But if it's Salah, he scores it or does he? Because he missed a few sitters on Sunday, didn't he? Yeah, man. That's, 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 
I just can't believe that he's gone through like that of all the time in the world and missed it. But anyway, Brandon, my team tomorrow night, mate. Um, this is what it would be. I would go with David Rea. I would actually go with Tommy Yasu at right back. I would go with Saliba and Gabriel, and then I would play Zinchenko at left back because these two actually need to play some football. And Zinchenko against Luton should be okay inverting. Yeah, I'm not really a massive fan of him against the big games, but against Luton at home, I think we should be okay. Thomas Party comes in for Jorginho for me, and then Rice mm. and Erdegaard stay. And then I would play Jesus right, Havertz through the middle and Martinelli on the left. That's what I'd do, man. What are you saying to that? Oh, I totally agree with that. I was just about to say the same thing, Dan, to be fair. Oh, wow, there we um, go. I think you're right. You can afford to bring Zinchenko in. I mean, it's Luton at the end of the day. We're going to have the majority of the possession. Zinchenko with his inverted role, you know, you can afford to do that. Give Ben White a little bit of a rest. Give Kivior, you know, a rest as well. Um, Jorginho, Saka definitely needs it 100%. You know, he, he's going to be a very important player and we need to keep him fit for the remainder of the season. So, yeah, I wouldn't start him against Luton. Maybe if you have to bring him off the bench a little bit later, but only if you feel it's an absolute necessity to do that. But we should have more than enough in that starting lineup to be able to beat Luton. You know, let's be honest here. And like we say, we've got Bayern next week. We've got Brighton at the weekend. We, we've got fixtures coming thick and fast. There's eight games this month. So, you know, we need everyone to get some minutes to be fully match fit. Um, and, and and be ready to go if called upon. So, yeah, I'd definitely make some changes. I understand what Kenny's saying about it being nine cup finals, but, you know, mm. we, we, we also complain about Mikel not using the squad very often, you know, when, when we especially when we talk about the bench. We always say about the bench not being strong enough. Now it's time for, you know, Mikel to, you know, use his bench, use his squad. This These are the players that he's investing in, you know. These are players that he's brought into the club, that he's given new contracts to. I, I, I want to see him, you know, put a bit of trust into him now, um, especially, you know, in a fixture like this. On the City game, right, <laughs> the tears, the tears from rivals, the tears from any football fan is just, it's glorious to me. And it shows me exactly how far we've come as a football club, really. Because yeah. all that tells me is that they're fearful of Arsenal now, you know, and they should be. They should be. I, I said this on the football terrace, you know, people are acting like going to the Etihad is easy. They haven't yep. lost a game there since December 2022. We haven't beaten yep. them there since 2015. So it was always going to be a tight game. But I think what makes or creates a little bit of a problem is it was kind of a little bit of an anti-climax climax from the game that it was hyped up to be. I think everybody thought this was going to be free-flowing Arsenal versus free-flowing, you know, Man City. And I want to big up Mikel Arteta because we made the mistake last season of going there, opening up, trying to attack them, and we got slapped, yeah? So the fact that he went there... And went, you know what? I'm going to turn up like prime Jose Mourinho. We're going to sit 10 men behind the ball and we're, you know, going to try and hit them on the counter. And let's be honest as well. They probably, City probably had the best chance of the game with Ake, who should have scored from that corner. But aside from that, they created absolutely nothing. Haaland was nowhere to be seen. He was locked off. And we actually had the better chances in the game, you know? So I come away from that game. Happy with the draw, because I think if you'd have asked any Arsenal fan at the beginning of the game, will you take a draw right now? I think we'd have all said yes. Um, but also a bit disappointed in two individuals in particular. You know, Gabriel Jesus, I think he he let us down. I think he proved that he's never going to be this 20 plus goal scorer in a season because, OK, they weren't clear cut chances, but he had three opportunities there to at least get a shot away and he decides to dance around in the area. You know, you know what, as well, Brandon, as well, right? Just to go in on, I don't even feel like he needs to be, well, I say, let, let me not say, he does need to be that 20, 25 goal scorer. Um, but what I, what I do think is, is he's proving time and time again, he's just not a big game player. And that's just how the cookie crumbles with him. Every big moment he gets, he does the one chop, two top chop, and then he doesn't cut anything. He doesn't shoot. Tries doing too much, Lee. Tries doing too, too much, much man. man. And I think just going off Brandon's point, I think 
He's not rubbish, but I do think that he the, the team has moved past him, and I I would I would get rid of him. I would get rid of him, and begrudgingly because you know what what I've I've been doing over the last few years, which I've tried to really stop doing, is getting too attached to some of these players. There's going to be a point when Saka is going to go. There's going to be a point when Odegaard's going to go, and I can't look at what he's done. Football's not about what you've done for me it, lately. It's about what you're going to do. That's how you get contracts. Yeah. And I think that's what I've actually had to learn is to say separate the 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 the, the, the romance of a player, the hail end of a play, player, and yeah. think you know what that's that's just not good enough. And for what all what Jesus did for us last season from that severe alert game last season, where in the yeah. preseason and he absolutely torched them yeah. all the way until we played was it Wolves again? Sorry, in the um in the game before the World Cup, he was absolutely unreal. Yeah. Ever since then, he's just shown that he's not the guy to to lead us to the to the promised land, and that's a shame. So he could be a squad player, but I I would cash in and and and, and sort of get someone else. But sorry, Brandon, I don't want to um, take too much. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I think the other player that let us down was Trossard. You know, in that moment, he should have yeah. squared that ball to Martinelli. You know, it, it, he had about five yards. That was the on. one for me, Brandon. That, that was that the was, one. Uh, yeah, that was the chance. That, that for me, right, was like the Overmars moment at the Old Trafford in 98. And you either yeah, do yeah. two things there. You cross it first time with your left foot and go to Martinelli, or you use your pace. Trossard doesn't have pace. So he's tried yeah. to get greedy there, man. So, but yeah, sorry, go on. You know, the thing is, is, is like people were getting on to us about parking the bus, whatever else, right? But if you look at it, take, take, take a step away. You, you know, you're not an Arsenal fan. You're not a United fan and whatever. Go back and watch the game again and analyse it and say, look, did Mikel Arteta set Arsenal up in a way in which they could go and win the game? Now, some people who are blind to it all will say no because you sat 10 men behind the ball. But the overarching, you know, reality of it is we had three, four very good opportunities to score, which is more than what Man City created. And they, they had, what, 70-odd percent of the possession, which just goes to show that, you know, having possession of the ball doesn't always, you know, mean you're going to win the game or whatever. Yeah, they did the majority of the attacking, but their attacks came to nothing because yeah. our defence was so solid. So you look at it and you think, cool, Mikel Arteta did more than enough in, and set us up in a way to be able to win that game. We were just let down by individuals. And it's like we went to the Etihad. We got a draw, right? We took four points off Man City this season. We've took four points off of Liverpool this season. It may not end up being enough for us to win the league title. But, you know, if we'd have said this at the beginning of the season, they're going to be your two main rivals for the title. Mm -hmm. How many points will you take off of them? I think we'd have all sat here and gone, oh, do you know what? Uh, if we could get three, you know, at the Emirates, then we'll, we'll kind of be happy with that. But the fact that we took points off of them in both games at their ground and our ground as well, two tough grounds to go to as well. Everybody struggles at Anfield. Everybody struggles at the Etihad and we've gone there we've got draws so you know it keeps us in it and also you know let's be honest if any of the teams had have lost this weekend whether that be City or Arsenal there would have been an argument there to say that they're potentially out of the league title race you know yeah. although there's only two to three points between it um each, each of the teams if they had that have happened you kind of look at it and think well how do you in, with nine games remaining, how do you make up them two to three points? You really have to, you know, hope that these two teams are going to drop points in order for you to be able to, you know, go on and win the league. So it was always going to be a tight game. I really don't understand what all the tears are, are around, other than the fact that all I can say is people are fearful of Arsenal now and they should be. If Mate, should... we're relevant again, man. We're relevant again, and this is what's actually we're, good. To we're, see. We've got guys. Let's let's it's not. Let's just get the gongs. That's what we really want. The gongs, because yeah, they everyone knows the situation, man. It's just like the boxing, mate. Great fighters, you know. Errol Graham was a great fighter. Where's his world title? We're playing really good football at the moment. We're looking compact, but you need know, to shy for it. We, 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 we need we need we need silverware to sort of cement it. But you know, you guys made an interesting point about Jesus. Jesus has come back from injury and let's face it, he hasn't really fully recovered from those knee injuries. That's why you're seeing a lot, you're not seeing the explosiveness and the, 
you know, the verve that you were saying before the World Cup last year. Another thing as well, you know what a lot of people we haven't touched on is City actually complimented us by playing an extra DM. Mm-hmm. Because normally, if you look at City, they only play Rodri and they would have played Bernardo Silva and De Bronya. So remember that time we were on the show on Saturday when I, when I thought that they are going to play Rodri, Silva Rodri, and Rodri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, yeah. and I was saying that we could attack their spaces. Pep used his brain where he actually, despite the fact they had more of the ball, he, he, he was worried about our, um, our attacking verve. The, the run, you know, the sort of like attacking runs of Declan Rice in terms of lung busting runs, and he was worried about the creativity and the, and the fact that we can attack those spaces. So let's not forget, despite the fact everyone calls us negative, Pep was actually, if you like, a bit negative because he he didn't go all out in terms of his team selection. He protected his um, he protected Rodri and I, made I, sure I, Rodri I, had help in that midfield. I just don't understand how people are not seeing it because I could see this. I think. If you watch Manchester City this season, it's clear to see that they can be got at defensively, right? Yeah, mm. because they leave so many spaces in between players. And, that. Yeah, and that's it. Wolves exposed them, you know, other teams exposed them. And they're like, well, they had Walker out. They had this player out. They had that. You should be beating this Man City side. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But basically what happened was like what Kenny Ken said. They had their back four. And then two DMs in front. And then they basically said to their attacking players, De Bruyne, Haaland, Bernardo Silva, uh, Phil Foden, you go and do, you know, the damage and we'll sit back here and make sure that we don't get caught on the counter-attack. So if anything, yeah, we was more defensive because we had more, you know, men behind the ball and we're away from home. But Man City were just as defensive as what Mm. we were, you know, because they were worried about the counter-attack. So... It's not a, a case of Arsenal part the bus. It's a tight game. Both managers, I don't care what anybody mm. said, both managers went into that game and said, look, if we cannot win this game, just don't lose. Whatever you, see, you Brandon, do, teams do it. Remember, remember Sir Alex, with, um, when he, there were big games where he used to leave out Ryan Giggs and play Darren Fletcher or... or, yeah. or Park, Park G. Stung. Park G. Stung. Park G. Stung, isn't it? Especially when he played against us, because we, John O'Shea we, as well, John O'Shea, still, all those sort of players. Vestry would be playing. Uh, Phil Neville would be playing. Like yeah. I'm old enough just to remember that. I, even though you, obviously, I know Dan mentioned the Overmars thing with the, mm. you know, the, the, the chance mm. again. I'm I'm old enough to remember that. And you know, I think mm. uh, you're, you're right, Kenny. I think for me, I look at that and I'm just a bit like bloody hell. Like people are just trying to really make Arsenal seem that like we're the only club that I've ever done that. I mean, I mean, bloody hell, can we not think, can we not go back to a, a game that Man City have played against Liverpool and they've changed the way they've played. They've mm. always had they've played. They've not played with two strikers up front like they would normally do or, you know, two, like as many attacking players. They've had to pack out the midfield and pass teams to death. They have done exactly the same thing as well. And I think what is going on is people are just, as I said, <laughs> Man City and, and, and Liverpool are just upset now because they can't get their annual six points against us. Because let's be fair, that's what they've been doing for years. And it's only mm. now that these teams are upset thinking, bloody hell, like, they, they, they're actually they're actually thinking about what they're doing. Liverpool, we can't, we, they can't beat us home in a way now. So they're just like, you know what, how can we, how else can we shit on these, on these, on this team? Like, and that's just what it is. Like the cookies are not crumbling the way that they want it to. Uh, and and they've, all, they've all got all these rival fans. I, I don't know when and how these rival fans got so self-entitled to believe that they must be entertained by Arsenal. And Mate. Arsenal must, Arsenal must def- attack how they want. I, I don't understand why that is the case because it was a boring game but bloody hell I, I didn't care less I, we got we how won. many boring games have we seen Lee and they don't hear nothing from us like it's just like oh that's boring we move on to the next I don't start yeah. putting out on Twitter going well Liverpool they, they might look back at this game now and think well that's the reason we didn't win the league because it was a boring yeah. game we didn't try to win I just move on to my game I don't give a damn <laughs> these guys but Chelsea are the fans by the way Chelsea are the ones. I don't know what. Maybe their season is so done that they have to be entertained now by other teams like us because their team know, is into I, such mud. Like, it's I've embarrassing. Heard, I've, bro. Heard a few, I've heard a few Spurs fans as well, Dan. You know, oh, Deji, in particular. Deji, you want to shut your mouth, my friend? Uh, Deji. You know, you want to hope. <laughs> 
You want to hope your team does exactly what you told us it's going to do. Win the remainder of the game. They're struggling at East London at the moment. They're str struggling at East London at the moment. But, you know, the thing with Chelsea fans, the other day, basically what's happened is Todd Bowley fixed something that wasn't broken. He basically, you know what I mean? It, only he knew why, why he did it. And then he, he made he made such a mess of it that he he, he forgot about FFP. And then he realised he had to sell um, Havertz to us and sell and get rid of a Mason, Mason man because of his cock-up. So, you know, Chelsea fans, well, you know, they're upset. But as I said before, I re the only time I really want these fans, caught, you know, getting upset and sorted is when we're down of town, all, all four of us, taking photos on our, on our phones with us, with, with us either with the European Cup or the league. That way, no one can dispute it. Personally, I yeah, think the league. The yeah. reason why I understand where you guys all three of you come from the Champions League because if you want to be an elite team, you've got to win the Champions League. I get it because you know, not the Forest have won it, Aston Villa have won it. I get it. But when you win the league, especially when you had these three teams at their best, no one can take it away from you. You're the best. It's, un it's undisputed. No, I get that, you Kenny. Know. I do. That, that's why I've, I've always wanted the league, but the Champions League is because I've never seen it happen and I was upset exactly. in Paris. But I do think that we can always, if we don't win the Champions League next season and we get to like the semis or quarters, we've got to use that as a platform if we win the league to say, right, next season we want the Champions League because that's what all the teams do when they win the league. In fact, if you want to talk about the best teams in England, I call it. I think Bob Paisley Liverpool's team and Bill Shaky Liverpool team is better than Man United's and Man City's. You know why? Not only did they dominate the league championships in England, they actually won in Europe. For you to be a great team, you've got to win win your league on a regular basis and win in Europe. Man United team under Sir Alex, unfortunately, only won two titles spread out between nine years. Man City under Pep, despite the fact they're dominating, they're playing beautiful football, one Champions League, one final. Now that's a controversial. But that's how I've been brought up to think about great, great sides. No, there hasn't been a great English side since that Liverpool side in the seventies and eighties, because of those two reasons I've given. Yeah, and you know a lot of people will say about the Champions League, and I must say, yeah, I, I want the Champions League over Premier League this season because I ain't seen it right. But don't think for one minute that I'm going to sit there crying if we win the champ if we win the Premier League. <laughs> Because that for me is what is what the aim is, right? Every single season we should be going for the Premier League and the Champions League, man. Absolutely for sure. But I don't know, I feel personally like there's just nine games. This nine games thing and Liverpool and City, a lot of people are saying, where are we going to drop? I feel like it needs to be pretty much a faultless end in this Premier League, man. Because Man City, I think, can win all nine. Liverpool's fixtures look better than ours. And although I think they could drop points, I still think they're going to win the majority of them. Can Arsenal, we've got to go to places like White Hart Lane and Old Trafford, which should be easy on paper, but not going to be. We've still got teams at home that are going to try and do all they can to pick up points. Chelsea ain't going to, they're going to want to ruin our fun. Villa are going to want to go for Champions League. I think we've got the hardest fixtures, man. I, I have to say it, Lee. And I don't know about yourself, bro, but this nine games thing, it's nine yeah. cup finals. How, what, what, where are you at with Arsenal and them nine games? Yeah. Like, what do you think we can afford to drop? Listen, you can, uh, I know, I know you like to, uh, you, you know, you do the clips after. You can oh, yeah, clip something. West Ham 2-1. Um, I can tell you 100%. We are, we are, we Is are definitely. Yeah, I'm behind. Yeah. Come on, Dez, who show your face on. now, Sunshine? I'm behind, though. I'm a bit behind, so. No, right, no, it's, it's, I, I'm, I've, got, I've subscribed to BT, um, TNT, so I'm not. Oh, yeah, so no, it's still I'm, one. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm getting this live. Yeah, no, it's still one one. I just realised. I just saw. Yeah, uh, Rodney's put two one. I think he's he's trolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, now be honest with you, I think we're gonna win all the games. We're gonna beat Spurs. I think we are actually. I think we'll bat Spurs. Actually, I, I really do. I really think we're gonna bat Spurs. The game I'm worried about is the Man United away game, and it's just Arsenal just can't beat Man United away from home. And I genuinely do feel like Man United. I just feel like they're going to have something for us. I don't know if we'll lose the game, but I'm we're very worried. I think Spurs, I think Spurs, we they haven't got anything for us. I, I really do. I think we, we're we're a mature team. I think we've got way more than them in terms of 
the hoodoo with them is more just to do with I, I, I feel like with the hoodoo with Spurs isn't it isn't the same like with Man United. Man United, we have actually genuinely had an inferior complex with the stadium. Whereas I think with Spurs, they actually just had a bit more quality than us away from home, especially when they were playing them. But I think now we've got our players back. I think we've got enough quality and I think we've, we, we're, we're, we're going to be local. So I feel like throughout the game, we'll have a game plan to kind of, you know, beat them. I'm worried about the Man United away game. I'm, I'm very, very worried. And I'll be honest with you, I think, I think Liverpool are going to drop uh, points in two games. I, I don't know where, but I feel like they will drop points in two games. And I think the grand scheme of things, I feel like we will have it in our hands to win it. But I don't know if we will. I think we we there is going to be a weekend where we go top, but I don't know if we're going to be able to hold on all the way to the end. Mm. I think it's going to be so hard, man. And I, I I genuinely believe Man City can go all nine, Brandon. I think Liverpool have got really good fixtures. I'm with Lee. I don't know why Old Trafford. We should spank Man United, man. They're terrible, but you just know that they're going to do one of these madnesses on them that they always always do. Um, Spurs hey, you know is Man United always do us at Old Trafford. You know how Man United beat us at Old Trafford? High line, last season, as well, high, isn't line. It? high line, high yeah. line, Rashford, Ericsson, and the season after before that, obviously, Ronaldo got a couple of goals, but it was the high line. And I think that's where, and the fact is, is that you know, they've got a, we might ha- we've only won once there, once Don't in about you. years, Don't twice you. in 18 years, twice in 18 years. I think you know, is it over yeah. penalty in twenty twenty? Yeah, it was in COVID. No, COVID, it wasn't a penalty. It, it was the assist. It was the assist from Saka, and then it was. Remember, it was originally offside, and then they went yeah. to VAR, and then they ruled it. They ruled it. Yeah. So was, was that the draw, though? Was that the win? No, we won that game. We won that game, but it was the and in the FA yeah. Cup, Danny Welbeck he scored. We won one nil, and then the yeah, Champions yeah. League, that, that added by your one. Yeah, that was yeah. two thousand six, wasn't it? They added by all. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been so long, man. It's been so yeah, long. Yeah. And, I don't know, that game for me worries me. I'm with Lee there. Obviously, White Hart Lane, North London Derby away is never going to be easy either. I'm, you but... know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about, you know what I'm worried about Spurs though? Is that, the reason why I'm worried about Spurs, not, one, it's a derby, one, they've got 62,000 fans, but I, I do think that they've got a better midfield. All right, it's not playing as well as it was last season, but you know when we beat them at their ground last season, they basically didn't have a midfield. It's basically Harry Kane dropping in the midfield. Now, they've got actual actual midfield, albeit it's a bit inconsistent. I just think if they still got going for that top four under the lights, you know, well, actually it's not under the lights. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's actually an afternoon game at two o'clock. I still think mm. that we've got to be at it, really at it. You know, we've got to, in terms of like attitude, in terms of like performance, because if we, if we're below that hundred percent, that's where I think, you know, we, we could struggle. But then again, it's just the pressure could be on us because we could we could have a, a Champions League um, chance for you know sandwich between it you know semi finals. When's the semi final? The first leg. Uh, not saying we're going to get there, but the, yeah, the week, you know I mean? the, week we, the week that we will be playing Spurs after three days before we'll be playing Chelsea at home. Yeah, then, we then play we then play Spurs and Spurs will have a fifteen day break. Um, so yeah. those yeah. be waiting for that. But I'll be honest with you, mate. I think that we will have enough. I think that this is where it goes back to the rotation. This is where it goes back to all of these things to be like, have have the players ready, you know. And I think similar to what happened three seasons ago with with Liverpool and and Man City, they were going two for nil back and forth. And I think the games that we will just have, the players will just be ready for it. You don't train, yeah. you just play your games. You build yeah, your the players are just they, they, like they just want the next game. As long as we're winning, you we're going to get that now, Lee. Every three games we're playing, every three days we're playing. Yeah, I, I think I think I think the players. I think the play. I think from what I saw from that Man City performance, the players they want to write history in the right way for us. They, I, I really yeah. do think that they want to. They, they. I saw a lot from that, and I, you know, that's why I, I was so infused. Not only by the draw, as as Brandon was saying. I don't feel like it was just a draw. I think it was moving forward, the grand scheme of things, the bigger picture, you can go anywhere and you can put up a great defence mm-hmm. and, and and build on a tactic, tactical performance to go forward with. So, yeah, I, I think we've got enough. I think we're going to have enough. Brandon, you know, you know, you know what? right now? Liverpool, City, Arsenal, oh, who's okay. favourite for you? Oh, sorry. Oh. Right now, 
Um, God, it's difficult, you know, because I think Liverpool got the advantage, the fact that they've only got the Europa League. You know, they, they've got, what is it, Travis, uh, Travis Spore? In- and they've got oh. Atalanta, haven't they? Yeah, oh, Atalanta. Atalanta. Yeah, so they they could they could probably win that in the first leg and then rest players for the second leg. Not that you know Jurgen Klopp will probably do that because we see him we see him bring on Mo Salah in in a game that they'd already you know destroyed the team in the uh, Europa League. Can't remember who it was they was playing. So, but I think Liverpool are the favourites because of that, um, and their fixtures are definitely easier than ours. I think you're right about City. They could. They could go on a mad run and win all nine. The only mm. thing is, is I don't really see City doing that at the moment. I, I don't think, I don't think they're as potent as what they was last season, and I, I, I don't think they're as great defensively either. And I think when it comes to a, you know, one of them games where you know it might be a little bit tight or whatever, and they're desperate to get over the the line and get the win, they could get caught out in the counter attack, you know. But. You know, I'm I'm also looking at ours, and I think we have the toughest Premier League uh, fixtures remaining. We've got to go to White Hart Lane. It's never easy there. I know we won there last season, but again, our record there is not great. Man United away, you know, you boys were just talking about that. I'm also worried about this weekend's game as well. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. I'm hoping I'm, I'm going to that one, Brighton away. Always a strange about, game, though, man. Always a strange it's, it's game. It's a there. strange game because Brighton, Brighton are a strange team. Either you go there and you batter them, or you go there and they batter you. There's no in between. There's no. You don't tend to see many draws between Arsenal and Brighton of of recent, you know, times. Anyway, it's either we go there and get destroyed, or we go there and destroy them. So I'm hoping it's the latter. But. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a fixture last season that ultimately, you know, lost us the league title. Brighton, mm. you know, beat us. Um, and that was one of the nails that were in the coffin. So that's that's not going to be easy either. And I the think it's... The only good thing is, Brandon, right, is last season we won, in the remaining fixtures, we won them all apart from Man United. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know if that's a good omen or bad omen because it's a game of football, anything can happen. But it must give us confidence to know that we can beat that team. And with this, with this side, which people are saying is better, that must give us the yeah. confidence. But you just know that it's a game of football. Who would be surprised yeah. if we go and beat Spurs? Who would then be surprised to go and draw to Bournemouth at home? This is football. This can happen, man. Do you know exactly. what I'm saying? It's absolutely mad to have this. In, and, and this I, I, I also up. think the, the Brighton game, the only thing that I'm more confident about is Arsenal play well against teams that do play and try and pop it. And whatever yeah. Brighton do, we do it better. No matter what people want to say, Brighton are a great footballing team, but I fancy my chances again with against the uh, the defence yeah. of Dunk. Um, I know Eston, Eston Tupian is a good player, but I just yeah. think that we've got Declan Rice, you've got Partey coming back, you've got Tommy yeah. Asu there, you've got Saliba and Gabriel just look like honestly, I, they are just... schools. They are honestly, and 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 I always say like I, it's annoying. I didn't actually get to see all of Tony Adams, El Tony Adams's career, but I was watching a game on Sunday with my dad, and um, um, so yeah, on Sunday, and and my dad said he just from he that those plays just remind him of Tony Adams, like mm-hmm. and. It's uh, it's one of those things where, mate, like they are just absolutely superior. And listen, my favorite player, people people always used to laugh at me, Ben White. He's he's playing like a man possessed. He's he's playing like he wants to be England's number one, but he doesn't want to play for England, which is hilarious. <laughs> but, but yeah, so for me, I think that the game on Saturday, I, I listen, Brandon, you're you're with in every right to be worried because listen they are they are a quality team they have got you know things and Danny Welbeck might come up and um you know try to ruin the party but I do think that we will um we'll, we'll come out three one winners or something along those lines. Mm. I think I think also as well I know when you look at our fixtures on paper I mean I've just I've just looked at it again a lot of the teams you look at and you think cool that's tough that's tough but then also, there's there could be an element of some of them teams might be on the beach by then. Because apart from Everton on the last day, there isn't anyone that's fighting like for their lives for Premier League survival that we've got to play. Um, you know, Bournemouth mid table, Wolves mid table, United, etc. And I think that's maybe where you'll see the likes of City or even Liverpool 
drop points against maybe them teams that are fighting down the bottom, maybe. Mm-hmm. So, I mean that that could that could be favourable to us. Um, I'm not I'm not really bothered about. I, I mean, people are worrying about the Villa game. I, I think I think we'll have too much for Villa at home. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. So not... like that, aren't they, um, um, Brandon? I think the thing with Brighton, Brighton, Brighton for me are not the same side they were before. For a start, they're they're not coping well with playing um, two games a week. Two, most importantly, you look at a game against Liverpool. I think without Matoma, they're not they're not great in attack. They rely a lot on Danny Welbeck. They re- relied on a, a ding a dingra. But there wasn't any much uh, sort of um, final product for me. Another thing as well, they sold too much of the family silver. You know, eventually that is going to have an effect. You think about the players that they have; they have sold for big money. I do think that they're not the Brighton of last season. They are they are beatable. Yeah, they're still going to play the same football. But I do think in that last third, Welbeck is very very direct. So is a Dingra, but. Matoma gives you a bit more kind of um, trickery in that those last thirds. And I do think that the midfield battle will win that. Where don't get me wrong, it's going to be hard work. We're going to run. We're going to have to work our nuts off to win it. But I do think that that Brighton game is more winnable now this season than it would have probably been last season. In terms of like Aston Villa, well, tomorrow Man City are beating Aston Villa because you know I'm saying that because it's Man City, but. You know, there's no Ollie Watkins tomorrow, and I know Bailey's struggling. So, and plus their captain's um, suspended because of it. he managed to get himself sent off against Spurs. For me, I look at Man City's fixtures, and I think right out of those nine games, they're getting 24 points. The only one where I think there could be a bit of a doubt is where they're playing Spurs, who could be going for the, you know, for the you know top four. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to sandwich that game between their penultimate game. Um, officially and the last game of the season. So you're going to have Man City playing, you know, like Sunday, Thursday, and then Sunday, just because Sky just, you know, Sky love a wet dream of, of um, you know, football schedules. But for me, I think if any of the three teams are capable of winning all their games, it's Manchester City. Not because this Man City is the great side it was from last season. It's just that they've got too much quality and they've got too much know-how. And let's face it, not playing... Apart from Spurs, not going to be playing hungry teams. They got more than enough, even if, it, if people think they're on the way to actually win those games, get the three points. Fulham away, I expect them to win. I expect them to beat West Ham. Aston tomorrow, I expect nothing more than Man City win. So that's where I look at it. Liverpool, the thing with Liverpool, they're unique. They don't know how to clean, clean sheets, but they create so many chances within a football match that they're always got that kind of element and they keep going to the 90. That's where I think that all right, they're not going to be like Arsenal stingy at the back, but because they're creating chances, they're going to take them. You know, mm. and because and that's where I think that they are dangerous. I think Everton are pathetic. Sorry, Everton fans. Apologising <laughs> in advance. <laughs> Liverpool are going to actually smash you. Come on. Luton have gone the good of some part and giving you, an, giving you a bloody nose. West Ham, I mean, bloody hell. Socek scored from 25 yards. I didn't know <laughs> Socek can shoot. You know what I mean? And I must say, Everton are the ones that I do yeah. think might be in trouble, but they have got an equal like do against side don't have the kind of the ability to actually hurt Liverpool, especially, especially in that game. And I think, you know, I don't know what the score is with Newcastle, but if they didn't win today, then that's 13 games without a win. Yeah, they did win today. They won one. They got an, an equaliser penalty in the last minute. Everton did, which was lucky, apparently. But there we go. Listen, before I do uh, your predictions, let's go through some super chats. Uh, big up to Max again, man, who's thrown another couple of super chats in. This one comes in. It says, to the panel, on an unrelated note, where do you and the chat stand on pineapple on pizza? Personally, I'm for it. Kenny? Pineapple I like a meat feast myself. Yeah, same here, man. But I, I would never, I wouldn't not eat it if it was on Guna Lee. What are you saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I don't, I don't feel like it's the worst thing. It is a bit strange, but I'll eat, I'll eat it. Yeah, same, man. Brandon. Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily something I'd order, but yeah, I, I'd, I'd still eat it. 
100 yeah, percent man uh he thinks all win three nil against luton love to see a strong stream and then take the subs off when needed listen i actually agree that we could do that because five subs take your five most important players off when the game's won that could be mm -hmm. the way that arteta thinks a lot of people think <coughs> he's gonna go strong so that could be the way that we do it another one comes in says facts which place to be from uh no, because I haven't seen him play for about seven weeks. Hey. <laughs> it's mad, yeah. isn't it? You said you said Smith Rowe. I was like, who? Yeah, I don't oh, think I would, man. Oh. I think right, for me, another, like, another if they're going to make changes. Oh, sorry, Dan. Another question. Would you sell Smith Rowe? Because yes. Gunnar Lee makes it about getting rid of um, Jesus and maybe cashing in. Well, there's another player you can cash on Smith Rowe. I think yeah. Smith Rowe, Nelson and Enketia, all three of them are going to have to find another club, man. I really yeah, do. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't rate high. I don't rate ESR like most. So yeah, I'm not that fast. Okay, mm. fair, interesting. Uh, Max has said facts. Gunnar Lee, 100. percent Damn, we started hate alongs. We did, man. Hate alongs were, were, were because of us. Uh, Chelsea, Spurs, and Man United are in the mud, and I'm here for it when them man try and chat to me. I say I'm top of the table and I can't see you. 100, percent man. Big up to yourself, Max, and keep saying that as well, man. Uh, Chay Tanya. Uh, says, big up, lads. Do you think the title goes to goal difference? I was going to ask you this, actually. Do you think that actually could happen? No, I think I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be one or two points. I think there will be one or two points somewhere. I, I really do. I feel like there's going to be some games where we think, oh, yeah, they're, they're bankers. I, I really think Liverpool are going to drop points. I really, I really, really do. It's not even copium. It's not hopium, as, you know, the people like to say. I just look at Liverpool and I think they've... They concede a lot of chances. They can they concede a lot of goals in games. They start quite poorly, and you can't keep living off the mm. adrenaline of uh, do it for Klopp. You can't keep doing it. And I just think when you look at Arsenal, there's a basis of how to win games. When you look at Liverpool, it feels, and this is obviously me being very very you know you know um, generalised of them. It just feels a bit squash swashbuckling football at times frantic football and I do feel like there are teams that will be able to hold out or hold out for a draw or get that win and I you know I, I think there are they, they will there will be a little bit more of a chance for us so yeah mm, interesting man um listen I'm gonna get some predictions from you guys before we wrap up man Kenny I'm gonna start with you what are you saying for tomorrow night against Luton bruv what's the score gonna be 4-1 4-1 Luton will Luton will Luton are a very direct side. You know, they put a lot of crosses in, very good at set pieces. You know. I'm not I I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet because I think they 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 are capable of getting some um getting getting a goal, but we'll just be too strong for them. we be they I call Luton defensive self harmers. Well, there we go. Guna Lee, what are you telling me, fam? I'm going to steal AFC Max's um, prediction. I'll go 3-0. I think 3-0 is the... Um, I think we'll make a few, score a few goals, make a sub, maybe get another goal and that's it. Mm, interesting, man. Uh, Brandon, tell me mm. what you think. Yeah, see, I, I was going to go 3-0 as well. I, I think we will keep a clean sheet because we're at home. Um, oh. Let me go 2-0. I'm going to go 2-0. <laughs> okay, interesting. I'm going to go 3-0, man. I think we'll, I need a clean sheet tomorrow night against Luton. I know Luton can cause problems. I knew Luton can score. They did and have caused people problems. They caused us problems away from home. But I do fancy us tomorrow night. I think we're going to have to. I think we're going to have to shut a lot of people up that are sitting there confused about it. Um, but listen, West Ham and Spurs have drew. It's 1-1. I must say, poor, poor, poor. But you know, these Spurs fans 18 months ago, Guna Lee will know, were telling me Kulisevsky's better than Saka. I mean, uh, where the hell has the guy been for 12 months? It's absolutely embarrassing from what I'm hearing. Romero and Van der Ven are better than Saliba and Gabriel. It's just, they need to give up now. You know, Deji's told me that Arsenal are going to be finishing below Spurs. Well, that's another two points that they've just dropped. Um, it's embarrassing, man. It really, these Spurs fans need to give up now. It really is crazy. But there we go. Sorry, Kenny. No, no, I was, I, I was just, I, I was just um, flummoxed by, um, you know, the comparisons between, um, you know, Kulusevski and Saka, and I saw Deji's um, clipped 
I don't know whether whether you had a bet with him. Just, you know, maybe you've got to get him so you can get more views. I don't know. Or he actually meant it. But nah, yeah, Dave. Apparently he means it, bro. Yeah. Apparently he means well, it. It's crazy. Mean, yeah. one, 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 thing, one thing we're going to be in contention for Spurs, allegedly, if you look at the um, rumours, both of us are uh, in for um, Isaac. So I suppose that's they might beat us to that. Who knows? I'd love him, man. I'd love him. Scored again tonight. Please. Honestly. Please. Oh, stop, be, stop, 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 No more Ivan Tony no more. You don't want Ivan Tony no more? Or God Koresh? Oh, it's, it's Isaac now. All right, no problems. I've always, to be fair, Isaac's always been my number one. But Jokeres, I, I think, would have been more realistic to look at. Obviously, Tony, likewise. But Cheaper. if Alexander Isak is actually available, then fair play, man. I'll take Isak yeah. over Awesome. Uh, I, like, um, I, like, I like Isak, but injuries again. Do you know what That I mean? is the problem, Brandon. That's the problem. But apparently, it's like a, it's something that's only just happened. It's not like a wow, this guy's always injured normally. So yeah. I don't well, think this is as bad as people are saying. You say that this is Arsenal. We we have yeah. players. We'll, we'll make it worse if he comes to us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're always. You can't spend I, that. I, I, I did. I did this without selling. I did a stream with um, DG. Shout out to DG, man. Yeah, and, um, man. He, he, we went through the, the, those three options. And, mate, you look at Oshiman's injury record, mate. Great. That is not great, I mate. I want him anyway. It, it's not great. I, I'm going hell for leather for Isak, mate. That that guy. He's elite, I, man. Unbelievable. It, and I, I think my last point, because I've got to even head off. I remember yes. the day that Eddie... <laughs> Eddie got the number 14 and I was just disgusted. And I look at Isa <laughs> and I'm like, that guy needs to be in the number 14 shirt. Not yeah, to say I that agree. he's easy to read, but he just, it's just everything, the way he moves, the way he finishes, those far posts are oh, like, yeah, bring me Isak. I suppose, man. I suppose there is one thing with Isak as well. Him and Odegaard played at Real Sociedad. Yep. Yeah, it was quite a moment. Yeah. Same, 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 same. That was what I was going to say. Them two together, man. Yeah. They absolutely killed it. So he could come. Bring him, man. They're the two that would excite me. Frankie de Jong and Alexander Isak are the two I would go, wow, okay, we're complete now. We're ready. Look, Let's go. Yeah. Um. So anyway. anyway. Go on, Kenny. One thing I'm going to say. One last thing. You got When you're strong, you buy when you're strong. That's, that's my last point. Facts, absolute facts, man. Listen, do me a favor, people. Make sure you hit the likes. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out Surfshark VPN pinned in the comments. Uh, and make sure you go over to Football Prizes as well. Head over to Guna Lee and subscribe to his channel. Head over to True Gunners TV and subscribe to Brandon. Make sure you're following Kenny Ken on Instagram. We'll see you later. Take it easy. We are out of here. Up the Arsenal. Peace. <laughs>